Hello everybody, welcome back to Behab Learning. This is our fifth video on Selenium, and today we are going to do some minor fix, as well as getting ready with uh, new tests, and hopefully that's going to expand your horizon. So let's do say what we are going to do today. And one of the first things, if you remember what I said last time, uh, we used the extension from base class to our Amazon homepage. We are going to get rid of that because, let's also say here, Let's say inheritance is better meant to be used with, let's say, polymorphism. But wait a second, are we using polymorphism here? Not really. We are just doing what? Access members of the base class. But this is not a best practice. All right, just keep in mind, if you're using inheritance, that means you are, you are using different forms. That's another OOP concept you should know from Java. Or that's a similar concept in other languages. Now, but before we get to this part, I want to tell you, thank you so much to those who never contributed with their feedback. I will appreciate if you guys uh, write some comments below, tell me what I do good, what I do bad, and I will definitely fix them. And one of them was to change the font size. And let me show you how we can take that. Uh, on the top right, you see the search button right here. And just enter font size. Manually, you could just click this, increase font size. You see a little bit increased. So if you do that again, increase font size. And then one more time. So it's slightly making it bigger. Also, from here, you also see when you type font size in the search, you can also see, actually, this is also small, so I'm going to get a zoom. Hopefully you can see it above when I'm pointing. Uh, from here, top right, the search thingy that you saw on the above. Hopefully that magnifying glass is helpful for you as well. And you see increase, decrease font size. This is manual. But also, we can click this change font size with mouse wheel. So that's setting on, so I can try that. I'm going to press control and mouse wheel, and let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see, that's perfectly working. I can make it way small or way big. OK, let's keep this size. Hopefully, this is better. And I think we will not need the magnifying glass. So let's make some more room here. And now that's done. Let's add a new class and say this one. Before we add a class, let's add a module. So let's say package and say in the Amazon, I'm going to work on bestsellers. This is the package. But when I say Java of bestsellers, that doesn't really make sense. So what I'm going to do for the Java, I'm going to create a new package. And let me say tests. And then I will put bestsellers inside the tests. And then refactor it. I can also put connection tests inside the bestsellers. And now tests and bestsellers uh, are packages, but I want them uh, not like side to side. But here, let's uncheck compact metal packages. All right. So I can separate my test and bestsellers packages. So this is my sub package. Now, inside the bestsellers, what we are going to do, test a couple validations. So let's say best seller test. Let's say we can always change the name. And by the naming convention, you know, you could always add under your pages, you could add bestsellers pages. That's something you can do. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put all my web elements inside Amazon Home because bestsellers is also in the nav bar. If you go to Amazon, so it's going to be the best sellers inside the navigation panel right here. All right, so uh, this one, but let me get my other magnifying glass. Now here, at the best sellers, let's right click and inspect it. All right, let's get all the elements in the navigation bar and then filter best sellers from it. Normally we can also get one locator just to click this one, but our goal is also Iterate through all of the elements. Let's get text of each one. Let's identify them. Let's see if we can do that. And hopefully, 
uh, you are better with this zoom and the top page. Give me feedback if you like it, or tell me to use the other magnifier, which can zoom in only on the, on the mouse, mouse cursor. Okay, so there is this one href with a tag, so that's meant for bestsellers, and there is another one for gift cards. As I hover over, you see they're highlighted, right? For, for example, this one is right here, holiday dash. So they are common with a tag, and they all have the class nav a. And actually, they all are part of a parent ID. So that's from div id nav extra. So what I can do, say so get the ID, let's use the CSS selector. ID equals nav and extra. Actually, I forgot to put S. All right, so now you can see we identified nav extra. Now, I want to, as you can see, it shows only one. It's getting the entire frame. But this is not the one I'm looking for. I want to get the one that contains all of the elements, which is holiday deals, gift cards, best sellers, customer service, new sellers, and so and so. So for that, I'm just going to say, give me the next A tags following. And then from this A tag, do you see this common class? That's nav A, nav A, nav A. All of these elements in the navigation bar contains the common class. So it's going to be A dot nav A. And you can see now uh, I got one of 14. So that's a lot of them. And we are going to access all of them. Let's check out a couple of them. And this is bestsellers. This is the one we want. But specifically, we can get this one, but that's not our goal today. And let's check another one. That's the next one. Now, this is new releases. You can check. It's also highlighted on the left side. You can see. And let's check another one. And we have 14 like this. Let's copy this locator, which is CSS. And then let me just temporarily paste it here. And then I'm going to add another one right here. Let me say now bar elements. And it has a CSS, and instead of password, we are just going to enter this one. Now, before we move on, let's fix this extension problem, like the one I was telling you at the beginning. What we do about this? Basically, I'm going to comment out line 9, and I'm going to get rid of extends base. And then here, I will add a web driver, and let's make it static. Let's say web driver, and we are going to get this driver from our driver class. And we can what we can do. Let's check our driver class. Let's open driver manager, and we are going to access this one. And let's also name this one a driver. And I'm going to use this driver everywhere now. From now on, I will rely on. I made it static so I can call by Amazon home dot driver. So it will return a setup driver. We set it up by our driver class. And if I don't put nothing here, if you remember from early on, let's check the driver class. If I don't put anything, it's going to give me headless. But right now we are going to do a visual test. So let's change this to Chrome. Now let's come back to Amazon home. And since now we don't rely on the base class, we need to initialize the elements. Let's add the constructor. And then we're going to call page factory. We're going to initialize our driver in this class. And then in this constructor, I can also optionally pass my web driver that I will use in the actual test class. And if and when I do this, I should say, let's say Amazon home dot driver is actually this driver that I'm passing. So now what I did here is connecting the driver of this class with this driver. Okay, we have a problem. Of course, we made a change. So we're going to end up with, as you can see, our object on this test method 
is not happy because it says give me my driver so we can just supply that because we have our driver for this class right here in our setup we're going to do one minor change we are initializing from driver class the driver method but instead of this let me comment this out this is our connection test class so if you remember this one instead of this because i want to get the connection i want to get this driver actually let me just say the other way around say driver equals and let me say actually i'm i want this driver to be used all right so it's in our setup let's make sure our driver is actually from amazon home that's the driver i want to use why and that's the way i can initialize elements and just for uh, representation i want to add here constructor called the reason why i put this statement here is just so you know when you see this message you will understand that our driver is initialized correctly and if you don't see this we probably didn't set up our driver correctly and we can always get this removed from here and now we are not relying on base so that is perfect and let's open our bestsellers test and then our setup will be the same our imports will be the same so we can copy this and then paste it here and then the class name is actually bestsellers bestsellers test all right now we have our driver and driver is set up from amazon driver let's make it bigger there you go that's good we can add our test but before adding the test let's do our after all and we will start using test ng and when we do we're going to do before suite and after suite so you know they're going to come next And you can say close, tear down, or exit, however way you want to name it. And let's add something here, a basic test. And if driver is not null, I want you to exit. Otherwise, it's going to give me an error telling me that there's something wrong with the driver. And that's a good thing that I know we set this. And now we can do a test class. And then we are going to get all elements in the now bar. So let's say now bar test. And let's add our annotation. And then let's get the website first. Let's test if it opens the page. Okay. JUnit exception. It says, you remember this problem, right? If you want to work with me, it says Jupyter, make sure to add static right here. And we, we are not going to have any problem if we start using test energy, just so you know. Next, let's try again. All right. So now we know that it's working. What we can do is to add a list of string. This is what we are going to store now elements let's say and then this is going to be my new array list and then before i put everything into nav elements let me get them with list of web elements and let's say let's add on this one now elements text and for this one, let's just say now elements. And we are going to use driver object. And we're going to say, if you want to get one locator, you use the second option. But we have multi elements, so we're going to use this option. And let's get our object, let's say by the CSS. And let's try to use the simple way. Let's get our locator before we use this setup. Let's test the simple one. 
let's put all of them inside the nav elements. After list of web element, what we're going to do is simple. Let's use a for each. And let's say for each of the web element, go to nav elements. And then add them to my nav elements text list. I'm going to add each web element. But this isn't going to work like this because each represents a web element. So you need to say each dot get text. And that's the only way that it's going to be happy with our text list. We might as well rename this to nav element list. You can do that optionally. What are we doing here? Let's add a note right here. Add now element into now element text list as string because that's the acceptable type, type string, right? And now we can print out each nav element. Let's check out what they are. And then we are going to filter it. And let's use for each again. And this time I'm going to say for each of the strings, each of the string, you can always give different name, but I like to give each. That makes sense. And look at nav elements text. Pay attention to what we use. This is string list. This is on line 45 is web element list. And right here, it is our list of string. And on this one, we can say print each. And let's add an X line. And let's test this out if it's going to work. Test fast. Do you see the output, holiday deals, gift cards, best sellers, customer service, new releases, Amazon basics, whole foods, and so on and so forth. That's the coupons. Now that we got the list of navbar elements, what we can do is filter the one that's best sellers. And what I'm going to do now, okay, we can just comment out, don't do nothing. And let me reiterate the web element because I'm going to make it quick. It's going to be similar to the first for each. And for each web element, look at now elements. And here, I'm just going to say if each dot get text dot equals ignore case. Let's use that. And we are looking at best sellers. If this is the case, I want you to each dot click and go else. You don't need to write else, but if you want to write it, you would write something like this. Let's say break. Let's test if we are going to enter best sellers page. Test pass. But I did not think it clicked. Okay, on this one, let's separate our test and try again. This is our for each. Let me cut this. Let's say now bar test two. On the test two, let's also get an object from Amazon Home. And OBJ, let's say, you can say new Amazon home and that's our driver. And this is the way we know that we are going to know if we see, remember, uh, we added the constructor called here, right? And let's also say driver initialized. Just the creation of this should initialize the driver. And we can paste 
this, and then we're going to get the three lines here. So same thing, we are getting the website. We are not using this one. We are using the nav elements. And let's close this break. Don't do nothing. Let's add our test annotation right here. Let's check it out if it's going to click best sellers. All right. Now it did open best sellers. And you do see constructor called. And then it's giving you an exception. We are not interested in with this exception. We were just checking. All right. Right now, let's say we get to h.click. And let me just close our quit for a second. At line 34, I will test have our two test one more time. All right. Now it opened the best sellers. Don't pay attention to test failed because we are not really interested there. But we didn't do the test yet. Okay. On the best sellers, let's get com a common element. Let's write it down first. Let's get a product. Let, uh, let's get the cameras. And, and get all products that has the name camera. All right. Let's inspect it real quick. And as you can see, there are three. And we want to get all three of them. And then I'm going to search here. Let's inspect. Use my selector right here. Let's inspect the first one. And let's find camera somewhere. Let's get the selector one more time. Okay, let's click on the picture. Yes, the picture is better because it has the keywords that we look for. So that's the image and it has a do class. So what we can do, let's write an expat and say, Look at the div. Now let's get it again. And from this, any div, I want to check what contains the text camera. All right. Any element that you see on this page that has camera. And let's close our parentheses and close the bracket. And as you can see, it found three of them. Now let's check out the other two. And they're right here. Let's get this locator. This is also a simple one, but I highly recommend to practice your locator skills. It's going to be so much helpful for you in the long run. Now we clicked here, but I want to also get something out of there. So this is our locator. And let's get the element first. Say by expat. And then let me make it a list of web elements, just like we did there. And we're going to say find elements because this returns three of them, right? So at the beginning, let's say list of web element and let's say camera product equals let me push it down hopefully you can see it all right so this is driver find elements by expat and here the end and then at the end we don't have nothing now let's go to the next line now that we have camera products we can say for each web element. 
look at camera products. Oh, we also have each already used up by our other loop. So for that matter, we can just say this. And actually, let's use each one a different name. And then we can do change later. And we're going to say print each one of the elements. Let's get the names or titles. And let's get this for each and camera product out of here, out of this loop. And after click, let's say continue. You don't have to say that, but. And let's add it right here outside the body of or for each. All right. So now there are two separate processes. Now let's run this code and check it out if it's going to work. Okay, it clicked the best sellers. And then we forgot to open this quit. So that means this each that we use inside this loop is not live element. It's only accessible. This is local, right? So when you say get text, this one is dead. So new one does not really survive or make it work again. So for instead of doing this, let's put this one. It's going to be inside the bestsellers page. So let's continue back inside right here. And then we don't need this for each right here. And we don't need this continue no longer. We are going to use the very same each to get the cameras. But we are only filtering bestsellers to make it click. And then for that, let's say, let's add another if block. If, if each, let's say, if each is not null. And now we can put this inside our if. And this is a null check. And usually, uh, this is always true. Instead of uh, here, you can just put true as well. All right. Just to make sure this is one of the ways. And now I can print after getting to bestsellers, look for the cameras. Now I can look for the cameras. Let's say each dot get text. But uh, we're going to look at the each of the camera products, right? So let's try to write something different. So let's get the camera products. Let's use camera products dot, and let's say for each. And I'm going to use a different approach here. I'm going to get camera products for each. And I use a lambda expression. And let's get each. And this name we already used. So let's say each one. And let's say each one. On this lambda expression, what we did was just uh, printing out our elements that contain camera products. And if you hover over this, it says replace lambda reference with method reference. So if I click this, you can also see this is, and two columns right here is a method call to do just what I did. So let me copy this and then paste it to the next line. And let's change one of them so you can see the difference. And then I'm going to comment this one. And then let's print it out. Let's see if we are going to get the camera elements.
All right. Do you see that we got three elements? Yes. But it just returned us the text of the construct uh, locator. <laughs> That's kind of awkward. So, which is why, let's close this one, then open this one, and then right here when we say each one, let's say each one dot, say get text. Why we did this one? Because this each one represents the web element. Let's refactor it so you can see. Uh, even the suggestion says that. You see, it understands. This is lambda expression that comes with Java 8, you should know. And then now web element, I want the text of it. Now let's try again. So now this method call is slightly out of our way. If we knew the type was all right, then we wouldn't have gotten this awkward output, but it's good, good to know what it would potentially return. Okay, now you can see that web element.get text, and let's test it again. All right, all right. Even though our test failed, we got what we wanted. We know that constructor call is to initialize the driver, and that was successful. And we got the Y scan, Y scan, and security camera. Those are the three options. Now, I will let you check this out, stale element, what that means. I mentioned earlier how an element is not anymore alive. It's just giving you heads up. But we got what we wanted out of it. Okay, let's check out what is 66. And it says right here, you should check if this element is causing this problem. I will share this code in the description. So you can try it. Oh, in the description, whenever I share, it will not like the angle brackets like this. So I will share out a link that you can open later on. And you can open the code elsewhere. Probably I will add it to a REPL or something. Then you can copy from there. All right. Now that settles it. We got what we wanted, three cameras. Now this code can be made much better, much, much better. Because this isn't the way to click the best sellers. But I just showed you, you could do that, filtering. And actually, using Lambda, you can also filter. Which is also kind of cool feature that maybe in the next videos we can use. And lastly, today I would like to highlight a couple things. What we did today was to disconnect our base class from Amazon homepage. Now we are not using inheritance, which is going to increase our performance and decrease the CPU usage because it will not keep looking at the connection and searching for the annotations, both JUnit and TestNG. They keep looking at the other annotations, whether before or after. For example, test is checking. Uh, is there before, before me? Is there before all, before class, before method? And they all keep checking. And then checking again. Is there something before, after, after all, after class, after method, after suite, something. So it's always on the lookout. So when we cut this connection, we reduce that lookout. Hopefully that gives you a slight idea. It's okay. We are going to keep discussing this. Why we did what we did. And let's check out our homepage now. We just use this one. What is this? Let me make it full screen now. This is our constructor. And line 17 was just to know that our driver is initialized correctly. There are a couple more ways how you can initialize your element. I mean your driver object. You can always check it out. And another pointer here at line 11, we are using this driver everywhere we go. How? We're saying Amazon Home Driver is our driver. All right. And then let's look at bestsellers test. I'm also saying it another way here in my setup. Driver is the Amazon Home Driver. Also, this isn't uh, exactly doing what I wanted to do, but here, this object is helping me out. 
initialize. All right, everybody. Hopefully, you got something good out of today's session. Hopefully, that is all helpful to you. I appreciate if you can give me some more feedback how well we can do things together. Remember, teamwork pays off better than working it individually, which is why I want to thank all of you for your great contributions on the previous video. That means so much to me. Thank you so much, all of you. Until next time, feel free to ask questions. I'll be sure to reply to you in the comments below. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye now.